Hi guys, Chris here with Super Savvy Travelers. Hey, today I wanted to talk a little bit about what is life like in a typical Italian hill town. Now, typical Italian hill town is a bit of a misnomer, really. I don't know that there's any real typical Italian hill town. They're all very, very different, even though a lot of them look the same. So um, my advice to you, if you're looking for a place to land and live, is go check out these hill towns and check out the personalities and characteristics because I think you're gonna find there's a huge difference between you know one hill town to the next. Now, what appealed to us here in Santa Dominica Talao, first of all, was the aesthetic, which uh, is sort of naturally built in, but also the aesthetic of all of the buildings that Antonella has redone. The church has been redone by him. It was a 10 year long, beautiful um, volunteer project for him as an architect. He is very proud of it and he should be because it is stunning. Um, the piazza has is tiled in flowers. It's an unusual piazza. I'd never seen one like that. Um, all these things that just add up to one gorgeous aesthetic. And for me, it's all about the aesthetic because I'm an artist as well. So um, so that's basically why we chose Santa Dominica Talao. However, I'm going to give you some more little things to look for on life in a typical Italian hill town. So Santa Dominica Talao was pretty much established in the 1700s. What happened was um, the Prince of Scalea had, had come up here and he had a hunting lodge down there somewhere. I forget which one. Antonello's pointed it out many times to me, but it's one of these buildings down here. Um, he had a hunting lodge and I guess one day he woke up in the morning and he saw this. And he said, oh my God, it's so beautiful up here. I need all my friends up here. So he invited them all up. And for that reason, we have a lot of palaces, not pal palaces, but palazzi, which are grand houses um, here in Santa Domenica. There's a ton of them. And in fact, our house is part of Casa Maioni, which was a, um, a family of lawyers and they owned this whole house. I mean, it's this house here and it goes all the way <laughs> to the end of the block over there. So it was a massive house, took up a whole half a city block. Um, and then of course, Palazzo Pezzotti, which you know about, Palazzo Campania, and the other palazzi that are up there, not to mention all the beautiful grand houses. The church up there has been here since, I think, uh, 16, 1700s, maybe even earlier. I had heard somewhere 1300, I don't know if that's true. However, in the 1990s, Antonello, our beautiful architect, um, as part of his master's thesis, created a design to redo the interior of the entire church. And it took him a long time to design, but it took him 10 years of volunteer work to redo the interior of the church. I will show that to you one day soon because it is really, truly spectacular. We are so fortunate to have an architect of his type here in Santa Dominica Talao. So let's talk a little bit about what it's like to live here in Santa Dominica Talao. It's a hill town, so we get a lot of walking. We get a lot of exercise. It's also very good. I've had a couple of my clients come here, and uh, even though they went face first into the cannolis and things like that, their numbers came down as far as blood sugar and uh, blood pressure and all these other things. So it's a very healthy lifestyle. The food here is really good food. It's really nutritious. It's not been altered and um, this done to it and that done to it. You pick it off the tree, you, you root it out of the ground. Um, you know, if it's meat, it's generally local meat and that kind of thing. They raise their own pigs. I mean, it's really, really good food. So you're just healthier when you're here. And uh, again, some of my clients have just noticed that their numbers come down. I noticed that their their faces are pinker when they're here and uh, they can eat a lot more, which they're not allowed to eat back in the States because it's not good for them. But here, it doesn't seem to be a problem. I know I tend to be gluten-free in the US, but I can eat gluten here without too much trouble. I think it has to do with how the wheat is harvested and what they treat it with myself. I don't know that that's the case, but it seems to be for me. In any case, uh, another thing about living here in Italy is, uh, you know, there is bureaucracy. There is um, things that have to be done. What I've noticed is that um, for the bureaucracy, quote unquote, there just has to be a line that makes sense. And if anything is missing from that line, you have to go after it. So for example, um, let's say I, oh, here's a good example is I have a codice fiscale and back in the day before I knew, uh, somebody said, put it in your, in your maiden name. So uh, stupidly I did. And that's been nothing but trouble. When you get your codice fiscale, don't put it in your maiden name, put it in the name that's on your passport. Because now I have to take my marriage certificate everywhere. Um, and 
In addition, it has to be translated by a certified translator. So if my Codice Fiscale is in my maiden name and I have a marriage certificate with me, but it's not translated, that's a missing link. That's got to go. Or if I don't have the uh, marriage certificate at all, that's a missing link. That's got to be filled in. So if you're, you're looking at just a chain of sequence or whatever that makes sense when you're doing something with it, um, a bureaucratic thing. I think that with my residency, we got down there and we waited and waited and they said, oh, sorry, you need your um, marriage certificate. I don't know why I had my passport and everything else, my birth certificate and Pete was there and blah, 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 blah. In any case, they needed my marriage certificate. So that's got to get translated and now we're going to have that done. And they needed also a note from my husband saying he was married to me, <laughs> like we're not living apart or whatever. So uh, it's interesting. It's interesting what's needed, but it makes sense. It's not like it's just bureaucracy for the sake of bureaucracy. When they explain it to me, I go, okay, no, I get it. I get it. That makes sense. It's just different. So um, buying cars and apes and everything else. Well, um, I can tell you that if you buy an ape without documents, it is possible to get it registered, but it's a huge pain in the butt. Happily, I have Nelson down there at the Pasticceria de Rose. He works down there and he's brilliant. He's fluent in English and he understands all of the things that you need to know about here. Like for example, buying a car or getting your residency, blah, blah, blah. And he's available, you just hire him. So I went down there with all my documents because I've, I was just running out of time. Like I could go down to the agencia many times and go back and forth. I just don't have time. So I just laid it all out. I said, we're here on this, on this situation here. I got the ape, I got the denuncia. Finally, I got the numbers added to the denuncia that I needed. Denuncia just is sort of a complaint that says I don't have any documents and I need to have them. So, um, so with all that done, I said, we're here in the process. Can I just pay you? Just go do the legwork. And he is going to do that. And I'm over the moon because I think it's going to get done a lot faster. And uh, he's down in Scalia already, so I don't have to go back and forth. So uh, Nelson, yeah, he's a good guy to know um, down at Pasticceria de Rose. If you need your electrics hooked up, you need um, you know, a bank account or whatever, he can help you with all of that stuff. And he speaks really, really good English and he's a lovely man. So there's my, um, there's my plug for the great Nelson. And uh, what else is different? Oh, <laughs> I can tell you something different and I'm embarrassed because the other day I was really tired, really tired. I was so busy and, and I went down to get gas at the gas station and I'm pumping away, pumping away and I'm looking at it and, and because I'm tired, I'm going, how many liters in a gallon? How much does that make per gallon? Calculate, calculate. And I feel this split splat, split splat on my feet. I go, oh, is it raining? I don't know. I didn't even look down. That's how, that's how stupid I was. I didn't even look down. I'm like, oh, what is a weird thing? And I look down and there's gas all over the ground. I'm like, what? It didn't shut off. It didn't go clunk. It didn't do any of those things. So when you pump gas in Italy, this was diesel. So maybe it's different. I don't know. Don't expect that chunk or whatever. Just watch that thing like a hawk. I was not. I was calculating how much liters and gallons and dollars. And I, I oh, it was just ridiculous. So there's a pile of gas and this man comes up and he, he's trying not to laugh. But you can see this. He's starting to smile a lot. And Signora, what happened? I'm like, oh, it didn't shut off. And he's like, oh, okay, well, it's okay. And I'm like, no, is it, if I start my car, is it going to explode? And I made a big exploding noise. And, and you could see him trying so hard not to laugh. Oh, no, Signora, it's not going to explode. Just tranquila, drive away. So I, I got in and I, I drove away really fast because I didn't want it to explode on me. So it didn't explode. That was the good news. And uh, I think I was uh, the happy topic of conversation at somebody's lunch table because he couldn't wait to get home and tell about the crazy American blonde lady who is afraid of blowing up her car with the gas that spilled. Anyway, be aware of that. Now, what else do we need to know here? Oh, uh, stop signs, just a suggestion. Not really, um, not really expected even. So be careful if you stop at a stop sign, make sure nobody's behind you because they might rear end you. Uh, driving on the autostrada is a very interesting thing. Left lane solely for passing, don't drive in the left lane. Um, also, uh, it looks to me like they drive, They, when they drive, they, ex they expect the guy behind them to be fully responsible. I don't think there's a whole lot of looking in rear views and stuff when they drift over. Oh, another great thing about a hill town is the fact you're up on a hill and the views. The views everywhere you go are fabulous views, either of the mountains or of the sea. I'm going to switch this around so you can have a look. Okay, here's the view that you get from mm -hmm. our terrace. Now I have to tell you that a lucky buyer has purchased our house 
and uh, we couldn't be happier because they are a lovely family and we're very very excited so this afternoon i am going to be going out to san nicola arcella with antonello to discuss the purchase of another house with a lady out there the house is a total redo project you guys are going to freak when you see it because you're like you sold your beautiful house for that however we have a vision and uh, i think it's going to be really really amazing so i'm going to keep you updated on that i'll let you know how the negotiations go this afternoon and uh, hopefully we'll see you here pretty quick take care guys